All right, folks, today we have a Beatles album review, the early Beatles. All right, there's the uh, four guys. Released on March 22nd, 1965, produced by George Martin. It's 22 songs and 52 minutes, or if you consider that half the tracks are mono and the other half are, are stereo tracks, that's 11 songs and 26 minutes. So it plays fast. It's easy to listen to it two times in a row. Uh, recorded September 4th, 1962 through February 20th, 1963. I mean, that's all, that's easily two years before the album was released in America or in the North America market, American Canada. <clears throat> it was recorded at Abbey Road Studios in London. Uh, most of the recordings were February 11th, 1963 during a legendary marathon recording session for Please Please Me the UK release. On February 20th, George Martin overdubbed Piano on Misery and Celesta on Baby It's You, um, during which the Beatles were not present. I got that from Wikipedia. This album this album is interesting. All of these tracks were on the UK release, Please Please Me. So there's 11 songs, and they were all there. Now, you could easily say this is Please Please Me. But it's not. Uh, Please Please Me, the UK version, also had three other tracks to total 14 tracks. It had I Saw Her Standing There, which... Uh, well, let's go through the three tracks first. I Saw Her Standing There, Misery, and There's a Place. I Saw Her Standing There in the United States was released on Introducing the Beatles, which was a, um, it was a VJ release in 1963, and it didn't sell. And uh, Meet the Beatles... Um, in the United States, so it was on that very first album, okay, and then Misery was also introducing the Beatles from VJ, and then There's a Place, which is the B-side to Twist and Shout in the, in the United States, okay, does that make sense, Twist and Shout was a single, okay, uh, let's get, let's, uh, enough of that, oh, the album cover, um, this is a photo of the four guys, and, uh, my understanding is this was on the back cover of uh, uh, maybe Rubber Soul, or uh, if not Rubber Soul, it was um, uh, Beatles for Sale. I think it was on the I think it was on the back cover of that, if I'm remembering right. It says um, eleven of their 1964 American recordings now on Capitol Records, and then it has the name of the tracks here. Uh, right here. By the way, it looks like it's very wintry, which makes me think it's from the Beatles for Sale cover. Um, and then on the back, it's all, it's just black and white. But it's really interesting what it says here. By the way, this is very hard to read for my old eyes. Um, but it says, the, the early Beatles, great hits by John, George, Paul, and Ringo. Newly released on Capitol Records. And then it explains, <laughs> it's it sort of like in a weird paragraph, explains why these are coming out now and not in 1963. Um, and then you've got um, the early Capitol Records and a couple other additional releases that Capitol Records was exploiting the consumers on. Okay, so that's the cover. And uh, enough in, with that, let's get right into the music. The first track is Love Me Do. It's 2 minutes and 19 seconds, and it's a John Lennon, Paul McCartney song. And it is an AABA structure. So when I say AABA, I mean verse, verse bridge and then verse and then however they ended the song um, but it's that pattern it's very common for the Beatles um, the lead vocal harmonies on this song are by John and Paul and they're singing in the key of C major and it's 146 beats per minute it's like a moderate shuffle type pace and it's in 4-4 four, four time by the way for this um, uh, a lot of these songs I was able to pull from this but there's quite a few covers on this album as the Beatles were wont to do so the covers are not in here, and all, also not all the Beatles songs are in here. So a lot of these songs I pulled from this book. On the ones that are not in the, this book, I had to dig deep, and that was very difficult. I'll point them out when I had a hard time. Uh, the verse of Love Me Do is 12 bars, and uh, plus an extra bar just to make it come back and make sense. Uh, but it's like a 12-bar song. Love, love, love me do. You know I love you. You guys know the song. That's kind of the jingle of the song. It's a, it's a, 
It's the early Beatles, okay? It's a bridge of eight bars. Uh, that's kind of how the bridge goes. Someone to love, somebody new. And then there's a harmonica solo. It's 12 bars. And it's the exact same music of the bridge. And in fact, if I just whistled that again, that's exactly what the harmonica sounds like. Exactly. And John Lennon is playing the harmonica, according to Genius. Uh, Genius.com. <clears throat> the song structure is a, like I said, it's an A-A-B-A. In this one, there's an intro, the verse, verse, bridge, verse. That harmonica solo, and um, that's the same as the bridge, and then a verse, and then an outro. So that's the that's Love Me Do. Uh, it's also famous because it's on the Red Album, um, which is uh, like a Beatles Greatest Hits album. The second track is Twist and Shout. It's 2 minutes and 32 seconds. It is a Phil Medley and Burt Russell song, and it is also in the AABA song structure. Uh, this is one of my favorite Beatles songs, and especially for this era of the Beatles. And there is this terrific scene in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is a popular movie, like right around 86 or 87, where uh, Ferris Bueller is in a parade in downtown Chicago, and he jumps on the float, and he start, and they're playing Twist and Shout. And it's, it's like everyone's dancing. And, um, you know, and his girlfriend and his best friend are there. He's wearing a Detroit Red Wings shirt. And they're, like, so scared that they're going to get caught and uh, because Ferris's dad is out there. Well, anyway, uh, Twist and Shout. Um, <clears throat> Phil Medley and Burt Russell wrote it. A group called, called the Top Notes covered it in 1961. It's a very rare, rarely heard, but I listened to it for you. Um, it was produced by Phil Spector. I, I don't know what key it's in. Um, I can't find it and my ear isn't good enough just to play and listen to it and compare. I, um... But the, the top notes version isn't very good. What I'll do is I'll put the link when I do the write-up. I'll put it in the YouTube description. Um, then the Isley Brothers recorded this song in 1962. And it has a little bit different jingle to it. Especially compared to the, the Beatles version, which... Um, well, I'll, I'll get you guys the link. You can listen to it. Um... But it was produced by Burt Russell, who is the songwriter. The Isley Brothers version of Twist and Shout is in the key of D major, and it's 123 beats per minute. And it's in 4-4 four, four time. The Beatles version is in the key of F major. The Beatles took it up three whole steps. Three, three half steps, or three steps. Okay. I should, get, I should become accurate here. So they bumped it up a few steps. And it's 124 beats per minute, about the same, and it's in 4-4 time. The verse is 16 bars, and that's John Lennon, will shake it up baby now. We'll shake it up baby now. Okay, and then the guitar solo uh, is George Harrison. And <clears throat> it's 8 bars plus a couple of bars for the ah uh, uh part. And then the guitar solo is essentially a wordless verse. So to me, it's that AABA theme, even though it's a guitar solo and not a bridge, but it really acts as the bridge. It's a verse, verse, solo, verse, outro. That's Twist and Shout. Great song. All right, the third track is a song called Anna. It's 2 minutes and 56 seconds. And it's written by a gentleman named Arthur Alexander. It's an AABA song structure or format. I listened to the Arthur Alexander version. It was released on September 16th, 1962. I will also provide the link. Um, it's in the key of, I don't know. It could be the same key as the Beatles version. It sounded close. I don't, I don't know. I would just be guessing. The Beatles version is in, in the key of D major. I know that because it has two sharps, and I was able to look it up. It's 109 beats per minute in 4-4 time. Um, the versions aren't too different, but I'll you know I'll let you listen to the link to compare for yourself. It sounds pretty close. The uh, the verse is eight bars, 
Anna, you can come and ask me, girl, to set you free, girl. <laughs> and then the bridge is 16 bars. All my life, I've been searching for a girl to love me like I love you. <laughs> it sounds like it could be written by John Lennon, right? There's no guitar solo, no organ, piano solo, no nothing. <clears throat> and it's a the song arrangement is a verse, verse, bridge, verse, bridge, verse, outro. So it's got that AABA model. Track four is called Chains. It is written by somebody named Gary Goffin and Carol King. Carol King is very famous. Uh, lead harmonies by George, John, and Paul, and a bridge by George, where George is just singing by himself in the bridge. This is a cover of the 1962 song by The Cookies, <laughs> uh, Little Ava's backup group. It's a total girl band, by the way. Uh, and it's also in the AABA song structure. All, all these early songs from the late 50s and early 60s are. The Cookies version I listen to, uh, it's either in the key of G major or D major. At, at least that's what Google searching told me. Um, Musicnotes.com has sheet music in F major, but that didn't sound right to me. Um, honestly, D major sounded right when I was I was like hitting the keyboard and trying to figure it out. I, it could be D major. That's just my best guess. Oh, like I said, I don't have the best here. The Beatles version is in the key of B flat. Um, it's 130 beats per minute, and it's 100 and, uh, 130 beats per minute, and it's in 4-4 four, four time. The verse is 12 bars. Chains, my baby's got me locked up in chains. <laughs> and the bridge is, George, I want to tell you, uh, 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 George is singing the bridge. I want to tell you, pretty baby, I think you're fine, eight bars, okay? There's no guitar solo or organ solo, and it's an AABA song, so it's it's verse, verse, bridge, verse, bridge, verse, outro. I think that's exactly is the same as the previous song. <laughs> Amazing. Track five is Boys, two minutes and 24 seconds. It is written by Luther Dixon and Wes Farrell. So another cover, a lot of covers on this album. Lead vocals by Ringo. Okay, previously sang by Pete Best in the early days, but this is a cover of a Cheryl song, A-A-B-A. -A. I think I also read, no, I don't have the source handy, but um, I, th I was reading the story, probably from the Beatles by George Martin did not want Pete Best on the album. He did not. He was not a Pete Best guy, and so they got Ringo in there. That's how this all started with uh, Please Please Me. Okay, so the track Boys. Let's get back to Boys. The Cheryl's version, key of C major, uh, I think. I couldn't, I couldn't validate that. That's my best guess. 128 beats per minute, 4-4 four, four time. I will send you the link to the Cheryl song. Um, it's, it was, it's okay. The Beatles version is in key of E major. It's 142 beats per minute and four, four. Um, so if it's in E major and the Cheryl's version is C major, that, that means they really bumped it up quite a bit. Um, the verse is 12 bars. I, I've been told when I kiss a boy, a girl, take a trip. <laughs> I'm not lying. I've been told when I've when a boy kiss a girl, take a trip. I think I stumbled over that, but that's that's the lyrics. Uh, take a trip around the world, hey, hey. Bop, shoe, wop, bop, bop, shoe, wop. <laughs> Actually, the Ringo version was pretty, uh, pr pretty faithful to the Cheryl's version, except for the key, I, you know. Uh, the bridge is 12 bars. Well, I talk about boys. Yeah, yeah, boys. Uh, it's a cool 12 bar bridge. The guitar solo is George Harrison. I'm assuming it sounds like George 12 bars. I do like George's guitar solos. In fact, I think even Ringo says take it George or something like that. And then George starts playing. Uh, the, the Cheryl's version doesn't have a guitar solo. It's got like a saxophone solo, which sounds pretty, actually sounds kind of modern when you listen to the sax solo. Um, and the Cheryl's version, it skips the the third voice and go uh, and goes right to the bridge and outro. The, th the third verse, sorry. It's a verse. The Beatles version is a verse, verse, bridge, guitar solo, verse, bridge, outro. What I meant to say is the Cheryl's version doesn't have that final verse. Track six is "Ask Me Why." 
It's a Lennon McCartney uh, track. Sounds like John on lead vocals. It's uh, it's not a very exciting song. A A B A song structure. It's in the key of E major, 133 beats per minute in 4/4 time. The verse is 12 bars. John singing, "I love you because you tell me things I want to know." That's how the verse starts, and then the bridge is eight bars. I can't believe it's happened to me. I can't conceive of any more misery. Kind of a kind of dark actually. Um, for John, he didn't really hit his dark stage until Beatles '65, but or Beatles for Sale. Uh, the ref, there's a refrain of six bars. Ask me why. I'll say I love you, and I'm always thinking of you. Who who who? Uh, that's the song. Ask me why. It's a verse verse bridge. The refrain verse refrain bridge refrain. To me, that's enough. A A B A. They just stuck that refrain in there to make it um, to jazz it up a little bit. Please Please Me is track seven. It's the title track to the UK release at two minutes. Um, it's a Lennon-McCartney tune, and it's in the famous AABA song structure. It's in the key of E major. It's 120 beats per minute in 4-4 four, four time. Uh, it's a. It's also on the Red Album. I th it might be the first track on the Red uh, It's the second track. Love Me Do is the first track on the Red Album. Um, but Please Please Me is pr a pretty famous Beatles track, I would say. The verse is 16 bars. Uh, last night I said these words to my girl. Dun 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 Kind of does that thing at the end. Uh, the bridge is eight bars plus a couple to make it work, uh, back to the verse properly. I don't want to sound complaining, but you know, there's always rain in my heart, in my heart. There's no solos. It's a verse, verse, bridge, verse, outro. <laughs> They don't repeat the bridge after um, after the third verse. It's just a real fast track. Track seven, P.S. I Love You. It's two minutes and two seconds, and it's another Lennon-McCartney song, lead vocals by Paul McCartney. It's not a great song. It's also an AABA format. It's, uh, it's in the key of D major or B minor. Uh, the reason why I don't know, it's... So D major has two sharps, and so does B minor. I guess it's, um, it, it depends on the chord sequence, and I really didn't dig too deep into it. But B minor would have it, uh, it would have a little bit different flavor to it if it was in B minor. It's 134 beats per minute, four four time. The Beatles commonly aren't writing in minor keys, but at least not that's not the way I hear them. The verses ten bars, uh. Paul is singing, treasure these few words until we're together. Keep all my love forever. P.S. I love you, 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 you. That's a Paul McCartney song. The bridge is eight bars. As I write this letter, send my love to you. Remember that I'll always be in love with you. There's no guitar solo. It's a verse, verse, bridge, verse, bridge, verse. P.S. I love you. Track nine is... Baby, It's You, 2 minutes, 36 seconds. It's a Burt Bacharach tune, co-written by Mac David and Luther Dixon. Sha-la-la-la-la-la. <laughs> That's what I always think of when I hear the song. Sha-la-la-la-la. Okay, the lead vocals are by John Lennon. It is another Shirels version. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Shirels? I think probably Shirels, right? Uh, I, I also listened to the Shrells version. Um, I'll give you the link. It's in the key of G major. At least that's what I saw for guitar chords on uh, the websites I looked at. It's 114 beats per minute and it's in 4-4 four, four time. The Beatles version is in the same key, G major. And it's 120 beats per minute, 4-4 four, four time. Uh, I'm not certain how this song structure works. It's more like a, a poem or like a like a couple of uh, stanzas, um, but I, I want you to, th it's not a, it's not an AABA, okay, so think of it like this, it's like eight bars, and then eight bars, and then four bars, and, um, it seems like the whole song is, like, two long verses, okay, <laughs> it's actually for, uh, it's one of the better tracks on the album, especially for a cover, I'm not too crazy about the covers on this record, but this one is, uh, I'll say it's okay, baby, it's you. Track 10 is A Taste of Honey, 2 minutes and 2 seconds. 
It's a tune written by Pick Marlowe and Bobby Scott. The Beatles version is lead vocals by Paul McCartney. Uh, and by the way, everybody did a version of this song. It's not a great song. Just take a look at the Wikipedia page for the number of covers, just the sheer amount of cover versions of this song, including many instrumentals. Uh, it's off the charts. Also, Billy D. Williams did a cover, yeah, from Star Wars. And Barbara Streisand did a cover. Um, there's a famous play from 1958, and in 1960, the play was rebooted on Broadway, and it's called A Taste of Honey. And there's a famous version from that 1960 version that won a Grammy by a person named Herb Elpert. That's an instrumental. And yes, I listened to the Herb Elpert version. I'll send you the link. You can listen to it yourself. There's no singing. Um, honestly, that's probably better than the Beatles version. Um, but I, I'm not a big fan of this song. It's in the key of E major, 120 beats per minute. It's in 3-4 time with a time change for the bridge to 4-4 four, four time. And the verse Paul McCartney is singing, I dream of your first kiss and then I feel upon my lips again. <laughs> he's singing, he's singing. That's eight bars. The chorus is a taste... A taste of honey, a taste of honey. Tasting much sweeter than wine. It's eight bars. The bridge is, I will return, yes, I will return, I'll come back for the honey, and you. It's six bars in 4-4 four, four time. Okay, so the verse and the chorus is in 3-4, and then the bridge is in 4-4. Four, four. The song structure is a verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, bridge. This song also breaks the AABA format for the Beatles. Track 11 is Do You Want to Know a Secret? 1 minute and 55 seconds, Lennon-McCartney tune, lead vocals by George Harrison, and it's in the AABA structure. Uh, I like when George sings, actually. It's in the key of E major. It's 124 beats per minute and 4-4 time. The verse is 12 bars. Uh, plus, to, plus to make it come back to the verse... Um, listen, do you know, do you want to know a secret? Do you promise not to tell? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I like when George sings. And then the bridge is four bars plus two to make it work. So six bars. I've, I've known the secret for a week or two. Nobody knows, just we two. <laughs> and there's no guitar solo, which is unusual for a George song. Um, but it's, you know, it's a Lennon McCarty song. It's a verse, verse, bridge, verse. That's the song. Another... Very simple song where no, they don't even come around to repeat the verse um, or the bridge a second time. Like usually after the AABA, they would come around and do an ABA or something like that or a guitar solo that's in the B, but no, this is just an AABA. Okay. That's the early Beatles. Okay. Uh, honestly, it's better some of those than some of those 1964 records. Um, in summary, it's uh this this album sold one million and one hundred thousand copies sold worldwide. A million in the USA. Now you'd think, oh, that's pretty good, but for the Beatles, that's good for only thirty seventh all time for Beatles. Um, behind with the Beatles, it's ahead of Beatles six which is one we're going to get to shortly. Um, it's just They just sold a lot more albums. Um, other versions did better. Probably because people had already heard the tracks before and whatnot. But, uh, let's, nine of these tracks, nine of the 11, are AABA format, including the first eight tracks. And then, like I said, those two, A Taste of Honey and... Uh, maybe it's you. I think those two broke it. Um, but yeah, they were just, what they were doing was covering their favorite bands from the early, early sixties, late fifties. And they were mimicking in their own writing. They were mimicking that song structure. Um, and that's what they did. It was like an homage to their, who they liked. Um, a lot of these are boy bands or girl bands, and it's interesting. And a lot of these cover bands that they did were, were uh, blacks in America. And um, 
I think I'd run um, that they were very startled to learn that. I mean, they just um, they didn't know in England they couldn't they didn't even get their hands on records. And um, when they came to America, they went to record shops and they that's what that's when they discovered it. So I think that's really interesting. And um, there's a lot of history there with the Beatles and really just the way the world works, which is unfortunate. Um, let's see. Five tracks are in the key of E major. That's a lot. Uh, they, in the other albums, they like to sing in a lot of different tracks. Uh, a lot of all the tracks are in a lot of different keys, but this one they they pretty much hung to E major. There's a tr another track in C major, and then they're kind of all over the board after that. Um, five of these tracks are Lennon McCartney. None are credited to Ringo, and none of them are credited to George Harrison. And um, of the six covers that they did, two of them are from the Shirelles. Okay. That is the early Beatles. It's not bad. It's actually not bad to listen to. It's not their best. Uh, I probably have this in the lower half. I can't remember exactly where I have it in the rankings, but, um, you know, it's not their worst album. And it's better than Help. And it's better than Something New. So um, let's we'll leave it at that. Next on the channel, I'm, uh, uh, Led Zeppelin 2 is going to be next. I've been working on it the last couple of days. It's going really well. I'll have it ready by early next week, but I'm, I'll just I'll wrap it up today and tomorrow. I want to listen to it one more time, and um, Led Zeppelin Two is one of my favorites, especially for Led Zeppelin. I've, I've always liked that album since high school. And then um, I'll go back. I'll do another Beatles album after that. I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of mixing in some Chicago albums since. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm in a stage, but I'm I'm developing a stage. <laughs> if I did a Chicago review, it'd probably really help my stage along um, and get me going. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm out. Thanks, everybody.